Hello, good evening. I'm Sean Green with the Lime Sports World. With the first innings cushion of 152 runs, the Sajikor West Indies High Performance Centre took firm control in their four-day match against Bangladesh A at the windward ground. In reply to HBC's 292, Bangladesh reached 124 for seven after the first session on day two, and yours truly was there for the remainder of their innings after lunch. This is Bangladesh in early trouble after losing seven wickets in the first session. It's Mukhtar Ali going big, sending this one sailing. He then got stuck into Carlos Braffitt. The fielder, well, he gave up the battle early. A waste choice, you're not going to get that. And then more shots, this time through mid-wicket. No respect for the bowler whatsoever. Teju Islam now showing his talent on TV. Another fine shot down the ground. Brings him another four. Fielder has moved from the point position to the backward position. So Islam decides to slap this one forward of point. Right where the fielder came from. Miguel Cummings to Islam. Someone call the police. No, call the ambulance for those stumps. Islam bowled for 14. Miguel's tail was up at this stage. And so too were the stumps of Robin Islam. But the no-ball cry for the umpire meant the batsman had a life. And the salt in the wounds. This drive cuts these two fielders almost in half. Four more to Bangladesh. And Ali continued to lash out against Carter. The fielder here with a chance. Yeah, a chance to collect the ball from the boundary. That's over his head for four. Then more licks for Carter as Ali turned this one through. Long leg for yet another boundary. But facing Cummings was a different prospect. Caught behind by wicketkeeper Chadwick Walton. Ali made 31. It's 140 for nine. And uh, Subashish Roy was the next man in. And the next man out. Someone called the corner for those stumps as Bangladesh were bowled out for 140. Well, HBC ended the day on 170 for two. That's an overall lead of 322. Craig Brathett, he's still there. Not out on 96. Well, things seemed a bit more even at the 3Ws Oval as the Barbados Select 11 fought back against the West Indies in their practice match. Replying to the Windies' total of 272, the Bajan fell for a meagre 143, but had the Windies wobbling at 119 for 6 at stumps. Well, it's going to be YMPC versus Counterpoint Wanderers in the second semi-final of the Sajiko General BCA T20. Last night at Kensington Oval, YMPC earned that final semi-final spot by winning the fourth quarter final against CGI Maple by eight wickets. Maple won the toss and scored 138 for four of 20 overs, which proved not to be enough. Here is CBC's Mark Seal. With third man being one of the positions inside the circle, Shane Ramsey just managed to get this four over the head of the leaping fielder. Partner Pedro Agard also held himself to some early boundaries. This one he pulled powerfully to square leg. The T20 thing now is to clear the front leg. And Ramsey did just that right here. Swatted this one straight down the ground for another four. The first of them to go was Agard, a judge the LBW to Kemal Smith for 22. The score 45 for one after 6.1 overs. Kemal had one for 26. Shane Paris came in and immediately was slugging. He did connect to some, like this six over mid-wicket. Ramsey too had a sweet sounding bat. This knock echoed around Kensington as the ball sailed to the Hall and Griffith stand off Amal Nurse. But Nurse would get his, bowling Paris for 29, 93 for two after 14. Nurse had one for 23. And Cozy Ross also had figures of one for 23. His one was Ronaldo Paris, caught at deep mid-wicket by Stephen Blackett for five. Maple would lose three wickets for nine runs in the space of 15 balls, with the top scorer, Ramsey, being bowled by Mario Miller for 43, 102 for four in 16.3. Armand Kelman and skipper Collis Worrell would see Maple to 138 for the same four. Kelman had a quick fire 24 off just 13 balls, helping himself to six there over mid-wicket, and then this one inside out over extra cover. 
Worrell was quiet, making 10 from 11, while Miller had the best figures of 1 for 19. Mark Seal, CBC Sports. Well, thank you, Mark. YMPC reached the target for the loss of two wickets and 11 balls remaining. Ryan Wiggins top scored with 67 of 38 balls with six fours and four sixes. Captain Shane Dorich was unbeaten on 64 of 54 with five fours and two sixes as YMPC made 144 for two of 18.1. The semifinals are Thursday and Friday with Supercenter Spartan taking on ASA Field Pickwick in the first semi. Well, it'll be the Wanderers versus YMPC in the second. Radio 94.7 FM will have live coverage of both games from 7 in the evening. A 24-member national netball squad set to be reduced to 15 players has been hard at work practicing for a three-day series against St. Lucia that begins tomorrow at the netball stadium. The local women have been participating in trials for the event, which will involve three straight nights of action. The thing is to give everybody an opportunity to play in this series. Um, this series is not for ranking, so although we want to win and we'll go all out to win all of these games, um, I'm going to expose everybody um, in this series. We all have a good contest against St. Lucia. Um, I expect no different this time. Um, they're preparing for Commonwealth Games just like we do. and. We are ranked nine. I think St. Lucia is probably about 14th now, and I'm sure that they will come to want to take down a, a team that's higher, higher ranked than them. Um, so I expect that we will be, you know, it will be very, it will be highly contested. Well, today's IPL qualifier between Sunil Narayan's Kolkata Knight Riders and the Kings Eleven Punjab has been postponed until tomorrow. Now, this was due to torrential rain at Eden Gardens. The match will now be played at 6.30 in the morning, Barbados time, while the eliminator in Mumbai between Kiron Pollard's Mumbai Indians and Dwayne Smith Chennai Super Kings will be played after that game at 10.30 as originally scheduled. Now, if the a reduction in overs until a five-over aside affair is still not possible, the winner will be decided via a super over. Now, if that too is ruled out, then the side which finished the league stage with the most wins, in that case it will be the Super Kings, will go through to the final. Now scattered thunderstorms are, for, are in the forecast for Calcutta tomorrow. Switching now to basketball, Daryl Jordan beat Leicester Vaughan by 25 points as the National Sports Council's Cooperators General Insurance Under-16 competition continued yesterday. Here's Marsha Boyce. We're at Kane Garden where Lester Vaughan and Green were hosting Daryl Jordan for this under-16 basketball match. From the start, Daryl Jordan looks like the better team. Zachary Moore with the steal and taking it all the way for the layup. Moore with another timely interception, finding Rashid Maynard who's unmarked for an easy two points. Lester Vaughan showing some promise with this possession, but they would only score six points in the first half. Daryl Jordan kept the defensive pressure up, forcing yet another turnover. And Maynard made the most of it. They led by 15 at the break, up 21-6. Lester Vaughan talking some strategy, looking to turn this game around. But Moore had other ideas. Keeping a keen eye on the ball and pulling off yet another steal, he scored 10 points for Daryl Jordan. Lester Vaughan did a bit better in the second half, scoring 8 points, but never really looked like they were going to pose a threat to Daryl Jordan. The St. Lucie-based side didn't ease upon their hosts, led by Maynard, who had a game-high 23 points, outscoring the entire Leicester Vaughan team. It would be a comfortable win for Daryl Jordan in the end, taking it 39-14. to Marsha Boyce, CBC Sports. Meanwhile, Graydon Sealy continue to rack up their wins with their latest victory coming over Daryl Jordan. CBC's Shane Jones reports. Daryl Jordan pressing forward against Graydon Seeley. Great dish, and that's in off the board. Check out Graydon Seeley in transition. There, a quick, easy jumper for Keenan Small. Daryl Jordan looking to respond with a break of their own. Move that. Getting it right this time, though. Money from the wing. Then from the other side, long two. Sweet. But Graydon Seeley would soon take over. Moving the ball well, small, two more of his game high 22. Here they are again, count it and one. That's nice. Small with a good luck, nails the mid-range jumper. 
Daryl Jordan not rolling over though, sinks that one from way downtown. But Graydon Sealy, clearly the better team on the day. They won 40 to 31.